Hello and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. I'm your host Justin Jarrett, joined as always by at James A. Duffy, Twitter personality that's, and that's USAB right. professor and Sand Shark fan extraordinaire. That, these are things are all true. All true. Way all true go. things. And just an all-around good dude, hey, too. That's awfully kind of you to say. I'll add that to your resume as well. Well, we're here to talk Sand Shark Athletics once again, and uh, more and more to talk about every day. We're, we're reaching the silly season. It's the season where um, we have to time travel a little bit when we shoot the show. We have to go, uh, has that happened yet when this airs? No, it has not. Okay, well... And it gets a little goofy at times. Well, it's a little back to the future. Let's get, let's get us caught up to where we are in the present. Then. We can do that. We can do that. It was uh, an awesome weekend. Oh. Fantastic weekend to be a Sand Shark. Absolutely. Uh, home opener for, uh, or season opener, I guess, for softball. Uh, unfortunately, rained out on Sunday. But on Saturday, they got a couple of W's, put up a whole bunch of runs, and had a fantastic pitching performance. 14 to nothing and 14 to 6 against Montreat. And uh, opening game of the season, Ashley Lehman comes out. And if anybody's wondering if Ashley Lehman's going to be like the 2014 Sun Conference Pitcher of the Year, Ashley Lehman, um, through one game, the answer is a resounding yes. Perfect game, 15 up, 15 down, nine strikeouts, absolutely dominant. And then that Montreat team comes around and, and scores six runs in the second game, so um, proving that it wasn't just a, a dominant performance against a weak team. They could swing the bats a little bit, but uh, USCB puts up 14 again and wins 14-6. to six, So... Just a fantastic start for a team that has so many new faces and, and so many players who are getting maybe their, their first opportunity at the collegiate level or at least their first opportunity here at USCB. And a great opening day. I mean, the, the crowds out down at Hardyville were fantastic. We had a packed house uh, in spite of the rain that we had on Saturday. We had uh, lots of people show up. A lot of alumni softball players came out to show their support. Um, and uh, alumni baseball player Michael Heesh was in the stands. Yeah, as Michael well. Heesh was was in. Uh, he was in the office the other day in the rec center wearing a Cardinals shirt, and I almost vomited. But uh, he has been liking a lot of the Cardinals gear on uh, Facebook lately. So yeah, it's it's no he's, good. He's looking at a, at a, a no destination good. Memphis, and uh, then beyond that in his, in his future. Yeah, but it was great to see you. You mentioned the alumni. There were so many of them there. I think uh, at least six of the the nine seniors who graduated last year were there. Um, just a really great turnout from the community, and people stayed. I mean, yeah. it was it was cold and wet, mm -hmm. and uh, fourteen nothing game in game one, and they stuck around for game two and, and to the bitter end. And uh, you know, it looked like it, it was a tight game there at the end, seven to six, going into the sixth inning. And we're just trying to scratch across an insurance run, and the next thing you know, we've scored seven, and the game's over on the on the eight run rule. So the softball players did not make it easy on you trying to keep score in your own buck because no. uh, w once they've hit around. For the first time in an inning, you got to start adjusting over your second. And yeah, luckily the the stat program uh, takes care of that for me on the on the computer. I don't have to worry about that. But yeah. uh, I think we sent 15 to the plate in one inning, scored 10 runs that inning. Uh, so no home runs either. 28 I, I runs know. with no home runs. It's so amazing. Uh, big triple in the first game. Yeah, Emma yeah. Irwin smoked smoked one off the fence, and uh, Taylor Boyette had a couple doubles. Haley Brown a couple lots doubles. Lots of lots of doubles, or, or at least singles with catcher. Indifference. Yeah, you know. there, it was um, it was a good showing and yeah. gap to gap. And I posted something on social media earlier today, just a little screen grab that that we're leading the nation. It's only two games, but we're leading the nation in about ten or twelve offensive categories. Nice. Uh, so pretty cool to start the season off that way. And uh, baseball, you know, they had some trouble trouble scoring runs that first weekend, uh, but they broke out a little bit this last weekend. It true at McConnell swept a three game series. Uh, five to nothing in game one. Great pitching performance from John Gora and Forrest Kirsch. Cal Davis had a great day at the plate there. He came back again on Saturday and had a great day. We swept two, seven to four, and seven to two. Uh, Max Balter swinging the bat really well. We're seeing it all spread across the board pretty nice. Yeah, 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 lots of guys swinging the bat well this weekend, and the pitching has been just phenomenal. Uh, not too many earned runs allowed uh, yet this season. I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I know the ERA is under two. Uh, Jamie Strzok's 2-0. He's pitched very well. Blake Drew came out of the bullpen and, and was just what he was at the end of the last season, dominating, locking them down. Julio had a, another solid start. Uh, so just all around great pitching and, and great play to take three at Tripp McConnell. And they'll be at home this weekend. Thomas coming in for a Sun Conference Series. Got one on Friday at 2 and then a doubleheader on Saturday, I believe, starting at 11 o'clock. So um, going to be a, a good weekend. Thomas is... Always a tough club. They're 3-3 three and three right now. 
Uh, starting conference play this early always makes you a little bit nervous, but yeah. going in on, on the three-game winning streak makes you feel good about it. And that puts it at 4-1 uh, and one overall? 4-1 and one one overall, yeah. And 2-0 and and oh for the softball team. Yeah, and it's going to be exciting to, to see this baseball team, you know, in person for the first time. We've, yeah. I, I know the stats, I, I know what has happened in the games, but to actually see them in person uh, and get a little bit better feel for the squad is, is going to be good. So that home opener is Friday the 12th in Hardyville. Yep. Friday at uh, 2 p.m. I believe is is the start time for that one. Maybe maybe uh, 1 p.m. Maybe 1. I think maybe 1 p.m. Check check USCBAthletics.com to make and sure. And we'll be broadcasting uh, that game on Beaufort County Channel. County Channel will have that one. They'll also have uh, Wednesday's game. Wednesday's, Wednesday's game that will Softball probably game. be in the past by the time you see this. Okay. It's our uh, future. Your hence, past. hence the Back to the Future reference. Mm -hmm. um, if that game gets played, it's supposed to blow about 30 on Wednesday, uh, 30 miles per hour. So. Um, We'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see. As, as we've all Hardyville may not be know. there <laughs> by Wednesday. We shall see. But uh, hopefully they will because that will be the last time Sand Shark Softball is in town until March for 10th. A good month, yeah. They'll be gone for a month. So uh, unless we get a rescheduled date in there or something with, with Middle Georgia or uh, if this Bruton Parker game gets, gets postponed. And speaking of that wind, uh, it messed up golf's plans as well. This weather, the spring weather. I, I guess when you try to play sports outdoors in February, you have to expect a little bit of weather. But uh, men's golf got started in a way, not a team event, but an individual event out at Savannah Quarters. It's kind of become their traditional opener in the spring. And uh, had a nice day on Monday, 36 holes. Uh, Brad Curran was the 18-hole leader. He ended up finishing in a tie for third. And uh, Judd, Mil Judd Milam, Milam. Judd Milam, Judd Milam. Uh, finished eighth overall. So that's a pretty awesome showing for our two seniors in a tournament that's all D1 teams except for us. So um, pretty great showing for those guys. I know they were disappointed to, to get uh, blown out or winded out, whatever you want to call it, on uh, Tuesday in that final round. But, you know, maybe Brad could have made a run at it if he got to play another round. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on the show. Coach Danny Allen from USCB Men's Golf going to join us. And, um, and he suggested, and I think we may have to take him up on it, we may have to have Brad and Judd on at some point this season. Do a little between two fins with those two fellas. It would just be genius. It would be brilliant with the two of them together. I, think. I hope yeah. we have a, a bleep button, though. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure. Sensors be ready. I'm not sure they can do live TV. Standards and practices are going to have to approve <laughs> that script. Absolutely. Uh, women's golf still a couple weeks away or about a week away. Um, had them in the studio yesterday doing their little intros and, and their fun stuff. What a fun group. I mean, those girls are hilarious. Um, Alexis Bennett keeps them on their toes a little bit, and they keep her on her toes, and they're a fun group to be around. Looking forward to, they play a bunch of tournaments close to home. I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and seeing them on the course a little bit because uh, a lot of fun to interact with them. We'll try to get some promotional videos and stuff out there on YouTube uh, in the next few weeks so, so you can get to know them a little bit, a little bit better because they're a riot. They're as, as fun to be around as they are great on the golf course, and, and that's saying something for a team that's in the top ten of the nation. And uh, something to just mark into your calendars early on is that uh, March 16th, uh, Wednesday, we'll be having a faculty staff versus students soccer match as part of a week-long set of celebrations for the new Chancellor Alpha News investiture. So um, I have heard. So there you go. You've I've heard not more been invited to play in this, and that's the, probably the, good. The, the captain has not sent out the invitations yet. And uh, Are you the captain of this as well? Once I get the list together, I'll start sending Have you enlisted Jim Glasson to coach uh, Jim us? Jim Glasson is first. Uh, he's my first round draft pick for All this. Right. Um, that you, you'll be seeing. I've never played organized soccer. I, I, as captain, will not play. Um, I will dress out. <laughs> we used to play some. Uh, some soccer in grade school, but uh, I don't think it followed the traditional it may international a, a, rules. A four by four by four, uh, four, four on four with no goalie. I think we called it match. Rambo soccer, if that gives you an indication of what the rules were. But in, in any case, that whole week leading up to March 18th, we are uh, going to be celebrating in various ways the, the new chancellor's arrival and uh, his already significant contributions here to USCB. One. Yeah, a little uh, odd to invest him uh, when he took the job back in June, but, uh, but, but it's going to be great to, to <laughs> celebrate him. Uh, he has done a fantastic job, very supportive athletics. We, we were sad that he didn't get to throw out the first pitch at softball the other day. He was scheduled to, and he was a little under the weather, and uh, actually came out and watched a little bit, but just wasn't feeling up to the pomp and circumstance. So Finnegan, so Finnegan <laughs> threw out the first pitch, yeah, he did. did a pretty good job. He bounced it in there, but uh, I can attest 
Christy from, Cook's bounced a couple in there from too. From personal there, experience, so. <laughs> uh, the range of vision in Finnegan is not great, so I can imagine that uh, it, it's a little difficult to <laughs> to make the, to hit your mark. You'd think. Just you're looking at the man behind the curtain now. You're showing how the sausage is I made, was right? not the man behind the curtain in this instance. <laughs> I was in the press box for that one, but uh, I have Anyhow. been behind the curtain. Uh, are we going to reschedule uh, Youth Day for softball? Is that uh, I have not heard thing? yet. Uh, I would suspect we will. That's a that's always a favorite, uh, although every day is kind of Youth Day at, at the ballpark. So, um, But, yeah, we'll try to get those festivities rescheduled and get Finnegan back out there. Um, it's going to be a fun season. It's going to be looking forward. a this lot is, of fun. I'm really excited about this season. It's just going to be great. Uh, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we can agree on that. <laughs> Track and field, uh, they had the week off. No report. They will be uh, running, some of the distance runners will be in the Hilton Head Marathon, or Half Marathon, rather, this, this weekend uh, coming up, and then they'll kind of get back to it. It's really indoor season right now. There aren't too many outdoor meets this time of year. Um, so they'll get going here in a couple of weeks and, and have the full squad back in action. And uh, I'm excited about them, too. They've, they've been out there working hard, uh, chucking their, their weights, mm -hmm. <laughs> chucking their various pieces of metal and, uh, and running and getting after it. And uh, I think that's going to be a, a fun team to watch as well. I hope to get over to Savannah a time or two and check them out. Well, and hopefully soon, too, we'll have our own facility. If you've got half a million dollars sitting around your bank account doing nothing, um, we could use a track here. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? We could also use baseball and softball we, fields. We, and could, we could always ask for money. We are. Money. We do have one upgrade coming, though. Uh, I saw the Musco lighting truck pulling into, <laughs> pulling into campus today. We'll have uh, lighting on the recreation field very soon. Uh, I believe mid-March is, I believe it's supposed to be in place for the investiture, as a matter of fact. So um, we have a lit recreation field where we could feasibly play uh, intercollegiate soccer or things like that as well. And just going to add so much more. You know, every one of these additions adds so much more to our campus life and, and, uh, and what our athletics teams can do as well. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, that brings you up to speed. Yeah. And, it's uh, kind of a rambling, disjointed fashion. No, no outline to that. It was, but that's kind of how we do things around here. We don't, uh, we don't use teleprompters or even note cards most of the time. Shark we just bites from the hip, as it were. Off Pop the cuff. The <laughs> off the cuff. Uh, but... That's, uh, that's a lot to dispense with in a short period of time, so uh, we'll let you root that around in your brain for a little bit. At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Uh, my kindred spirit, Danny Allen. Uh, we've, you still haven't met him, I don't think, I have, have you? I have. I walked in and met him. And it's you finally met him. Got, Fantastic. Uh, well, we, haven't, we, uh, we haven't had any little pet names or greetings or anything for each other established as yet. So. Well, we, uh, we spend a lot of time, he and I, talking, uh, talking TV or, or Netflix, if you will. Uh, we'll watch a lot of the same shows and have the same sense of humor, so that's always a good time, and, and that's why we also both believe that Judd and Brad on the show would be good times. <laughs> good times will be had by all. You may have to keep <laughs> that one private, though. We'll see. <laughs> It'll be good outtakes. Absolutely. Well, there's, uh, there's one thing left to do. We, we always save the, the best for last, and that's the Sandshark Bites Athlete of the Week, and uh, not much deliberation this week. Not it was all. pretty, pretty easy. Um, Ashley Lehman, you threw a perfect game. You're the Sand Shark Bites Athlete of the Week. Somehow not the Sun Conference Pitcher of the Week. I cannot explain how my fellow SIDs vote, but uh, you are the Sand Shark Bites Student Athlete of the Week. 15 up, 15 down, nine strikeouts, nothing out of the infield, and just pure domination. Only one close play. Marissa Becker made a nice play on a ball up the middle um, to preserve it, and then she just blew through them in the fifth inning. And uh, I would have liked to have seen her actually pitch more. I mean, right, it, yeah. unfortunately, it was hardly got to see her. <laughs> unfortunately, it was 14 <laughs> to nothing, so so it stopped after five. I would have liked to have seen a couple more innings because I don't think anybody was getting a hit off of her on Saturday. I'm looking forward Agreed. to seeing more. Yes, absolutely. She was <laughs> on fire. It's great. And I was ready to watch her pitch on Sunday and see if she could do it again. And then we got rained out. So, Ashley Lehman, what a start! Let's hope uh, you can follow that lead all season and uh, continue to lead your your pitching staff as well. Coach Heberling talked about. Uh, 
last week about how much Ashley means to that pitching staff as a leader. And, uh, and we saw some of the other pitchers throw well in game two. So hopefully that can continue and, and have a dominant season for Sandshark softball. So that's going to do it for us here on Sandshark Bites. Another week in the books, uh, another busy one ahead of us, and we'll see you next week to discuss all of it. Until then, keep those fins up.